Hey, good evening, everybody. This is uh, I am Hotep Jed, Rahu Bhatt. Peace to the gods. Peace to everybody involved with the movement, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I hear people saying that, you know, stop saying sovereign citizen or something like that. Uh, you can't really be a sovereign citizen. Either you're a citizen <laughs> or you're sovereign. You can't be a sovereign citizen. That's something that uh, the servants keep saying. They keep saying, oh, you're one of those sovereign citizens. Nah, bitch, I'm just sovereign. Right? You're sovereign over yourself. That's the sense in which I'm using the word. You know, you had the choice to... Make your own decisions. Uh, believe whatever God you want to believe in. Uh, to date a woman, to not to date a woman. To take care of your child, or not to take care of your child. You're you're the God, and I'm not talking about the God, the Creator, but you're able to create yourself. You can create paperwork. You can you could build a car if you wanted to. You can come up with a cure for fucking cancer. You can. You're a god on a lower level, but you're still a god. And if you fight for your freedom by doing the knowledge and reading court cases and stuff um, and getting indulged and getting ingratiated with people who really know what the fuck they're talking about, um, then you're also a god. Because a god can recognize another god. It's like a pimp can recognize another pimp. So... Um, I guess my topic of the day is I'm um, hearing a lot of Moors out there, you know, peace on my Moors, but I'm hearing a lot of, oh, uh, the government is de facto and, uh, you know, the uh, government ceased to exist, you know, after 1871. And I'm hearing a lot of arguments, a lot of philosophical uh, constitutional arguments. Uh, this video probably won't have anything to do with, uh, with child support. Uh, but it's good to know just the law in general, not just fucking child support. Um, the law is way more vast than just child support. And plus, I'm not really concerned with the money because I'm a hustler. I make money anyway. I have other businesses. But um, a true passion has turned into studying the law. So anyway, I don't want to look at this, uh, this U.S. Supreme Court case from 1875. It's the United States versus Krushank. And in this, you will you'll hear uh, the opinion of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court actually um, mention that there's two different United States. Now, you, you guys got to check this out. I'm going to read it out. <sighs> Citizens are the members of the political community to which they belong. They are the people who compose the community and who, in their associated capacity, have established or submitted themselves to the dominion of a government for the promotion of the general welfare and the protection of their individual, as well as their collective rights. The duty of a government to afford protection is, is limited always by the power it possesses for that purpose. There is a political system, a government of each of the several states, and a government of the United States. Each is distinct from the others and has citizens of its own who owe it allegiance and whose rights within its jurisdiction it must protect. The same person may be at the same time a citizen of the United States and a citizen of a state, but his rights under citizenship under one of those governments will be different from those he has under the other. And if I can find a document that I got from federal court um, saying that I was a, a citizen of my state, they recognize me as a citizen of my state. Um, give me a second here. Okay, my case is notice appeal. Uh, 
fed case. Let's see. Uh, no, nah, that wasn't it. Fed case one. No, nah, that wasn't it either. I love you. I'm trying to find this. Deny the system. Okay, now that's something. Alright, well, I thought I could find it real quick, but notice of appeal. Okay, well, I can never find shit when I want to show it to y'all. Ah! Here it is. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, you know what? No, this is the second time I tried to get it in the federal court. Alright. So... Okay, anyway, let, let's read on. I'll find that shit later. The government of the United States, although it is within the scope of its powers, supreme and beyond the states, can neither grant nor secure to its citizens rights or privileges which are not expressly or by implication placed under its jurisdiction. All that cannot be so granted or secured are left to the exclusion protection of the states. The right of the people peaceably to assemble for lawful purposes with the obligation on the part of the states to afford its protection existed long before the adoption of the Constitution. Right? So they're saying you already had the right to peaceably assemble before the existence of the Constitution. Constitution's only there and government's only the, the, there to protect your rights. Not you. They don't give them to you. God gives them to you. The First Amendment to the Constitution, prohibiting Congress from abridging the right to assemble and petition, was not intended to limit the action of the state governments in respect to their own citizens, but to operate upon the national government alone. It let the authority of the states unimpaired, adding nothing to the already existing powers of the United States, and guaranteed the continuance of the right only against congressional interference. The people, for their protection and the enjoyment of it, must therefore look to the states where the power for that purpose was originally placed. The right of the people peaceably to assemble for the purpose of petitioning Congress for redress of grievances, right? I'm always talking about redress for child support, you know, uh, or for anything else connected with the powers or duties of the national government is an attribute of national citizenship and as such under the protection of and guaranteed by the United States. The very idea of a government Republican in form implies that right and an invasion of its presence uh, of it presents a case within the sovereignty in the United States. The right to bear arms is not granted by the Constitution. Neither is it in any matter dependent upon that instrument for its existence. So they're saying the right to bear arms existed and it, didn't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't depend on the instrument as such as the Constitution for its existence. The Second Amendment mean no more than that it shall not be infringed by Congress and has no other effect than to restrict the powers of the national government. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, well, you guys can read the rest of this. So, if there's two different United States, one is the government and one is a corporate body, they had to have created that because at the inception of the United States in 1776, um, um, which I think is when the Declaration of Independence was written and establishing independence from England. So anyway, 
nearly a hundred years after that, um, we're going to have the Organic Act of 1871, which is the document I'm looking at now. Now, the, the document 1871, uh, this is when Congress, given their plenary powers, uh, basically created the corporate United States. And we're, we're going to read through this. All right. So if you're out there fighting for your freedom, you don't like to read. Uh, you, in, you in between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> because if you don't read, your ass gonna be stuck in the abyss. And uh, you're gonna be enslaved like the Jews who came over here on the slave ships, the Hebrews, for uh, committing transgressions against their God. You know, that, that's basically what everybody's doing in America. Every, it's like America's like a big ass Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, I'm in California where a lot of motherfuckers are stupid. It don't even matter if you. <laughs> Uh, if you're white, black, brown, yellow, you know, whatever you are. Well, not everybody, but the majority of motherfuckers in California are stupid. Now, I'm from Cali, and I can say that comfortably. A lot of motherfuckers are stupid out here. They live in, I don't know, they live in, <laughs> in a cloud or something. Motherfuckers think JFK is still president. <laughs> yeah, check out my boy Mark Dice. He's in San Diego, and... Uh, I'll leave them in the in the footnotes, but that dude. Okay, anyway, I don't want to go. I don't want to digress too much. So, uh, chapter forty-two, an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Cong Congress assembled, that all that part of the territory of the United States included within the limits of the District of Columbia be, and the same is hereby created into a government by the name of the District of Columbia, by which name it is hereby constituted a body corporate for municipal purposes. So you, you really want to pay attention to this dependent clause right here, this dependent sentence right here. It was constituted as a body corporate. That's what this document is doing. It's setting up the corporate, setting up the rules for it, um, setting up its territory, and its uh, and its powers to privately contract, and may contract and be contracted with, sue and be sued, plea and be impleted, have a seal and exercise all other powers of a municipal corporation, not inconsistent with the Constitution and laws of the United States and the provision of this act. So that's basically what a person is, right? A corporation, a trust, a partnership. It can be contracted with. See, this is, this is the part where they go from public to private. And they're making private contracts with you. And they're enforcing them. You know, like the Social Security number, DNV. Those are all private corporations, or actually they're public corporations, but they're still um, going from the public domain to the private domain and extracting money out of the private domain, which is, you know, like me and you. They're making contracts and we're signing them, and then they're enforcing them like shit, like right away. So to take the power from them, you got to just not sign these contracts, y'all. <laughs> you just got to uh, have some type of, you know, some intelligence when you're reading these contracts because uh, you're already under adhesion contracts. And we all know what adhesion contracts are. Adhesion contracts are given when you're not even conscious, like, like the Social Security Um when your parents sign you up for Social Security, they don't know what they're doing. And you too young to, to know. You should, you just started breathing. On the, on the, <laughs> you just came into existence. How are you supposed to know what Social Security is? So it's up to you to rebut all that stuff if you go to court, man. So, yeah. So anyway, let's read Section 2. And be it further enacted that the executive power 
and authority in and over said District of Columbia shall be vested in a governor who shall be appointed by the president by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and who shall hold his office for four years and until his successor shall be appointed and qualified, the governor shall be a citizen of and shall have resided within the district 12 months before his appointment. So they're saying that the governor got to live there for 12 months before he can uh, become governor and have the qualification of an elector. He may grant pardons and respites for offenses against the laws of said district enacted by the legislative assembly thereof. He shall commission, commission all officers who shall be elected or appointed to office under the laws of the said district enacted as aforesaid and shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. So it is, it is laying out the duties of the governor and who actually appoints the governor and uh, which would be the president. The president has to uh, have the consent of Senate, the Senate to actually uh, elect his elect or his elector to be uh, in office. So I'm not going to read any more than that because I think my point was made in section one of this chapter 42 that they set up this corporate body to contract with the private citizens. You know, there's a you know, there's a, there's all types of laws, man. There's private law, there's, there's public law. The Constitution is public law for public officials. So, it, it, you know, like like it was saying here that the Constitution, the, in this case law, United States versus Cruikshank, it was saying, the judge was saying that you don't get your, the, the Constitution doesn't create your rights. God gives you your rights. So... People are saying, oh, I got constitutional rights. <laughs> uh, no, nah, you don't have no constitutional rights. You have God-given rights, which is better than the goddamn Constitution. The Constitution just protects your rights and limits government from encroaching um, on a private citizen because they're a public entity, they're, which means they adhere to public law. Public law is in the public. It has nothing to do with the private citizens of, Amer of America. But what they did was they created this corporate body, this corporation to contract with people in the private. That's the only way they can dig their hands in the private is to um, create a corporation to contract with people. Because remember, contract makes the law. So, you know, private law, there's tort law, um, what else is there? There's property law, and uh, I think there's one other one that, uh, that I can't remember right now, but I'll get it one day. I'll get it one day. But I know for sure these people are trying to reach from the public side into the private side, because the private side is where everybody got the money at. And since the United States went broke in 1933, uh, the people are now held as collateral. You know, with the with with, with the um, Federal Reserve Act of 1913, uh, the way they took uh, took away the gold and the silver, the the lawful money. Uh, now we're just using debt instruments, dollars. Dollars don't mean. Sh I mean, they don't. They have no value in itself. A dollar has no value in itself. There's no tangible value in a dollar. Is this a nice piece of paper with some shit printed on it? You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, I don't want to dive too far into uh, the paper money theory. The, I mean, the vapor money theory, but that's basically what it is. Um, I wanted to show you guys one other thing. But anyway, I think I'm going to end the video right here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is all I want to show you guys. I don't want to make the video too long, but there's a there's two United States going on, and don't believe me, listen to this goddamn justice right here of the Supreme Court. Don't believe me. Uh, I'm just reading what everybody else should be reading. So, 
anyway, uh, y'all have a good night. It's I am Hotep Jed Mutalib. I tell him L that I'm out. Uh, peace to the gods, you know, peace to the nation of Islam, peace to the American citizens, uh, peace to the Nawabia nation, peace to Morris Science Temple of America, peace to uh, uh, Islamic Hebrews, peace to anybody who seeks peace, basically. And uh, remember, remember, the people are sovereign. And actually, I'm going to do a, another video for anybody got doubts that the people are sovereign, uh, I'm going to bring up some court cases that Supreme Court justices said that the people are sovereign. So it's not some shit I'm just making up. I'm just telling you what I read. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to be coming out with a website soon. It's called GoldenMoreServices.com. Where, we're, uh, of course, we're going to try to do our best to help people. But at the same time, it's not just going to be about child support. It's going to be about like uh, criminal cases, too, because all criminal cases are commercial. See, uh, motherfuckers got to learn how to uh, write bonds and shit. Um, we have some of that. Um, people who I, you know, speak with, I have a dialogue with, uh, they spent years in that shit. Um, you know, we out here for the people, man. Um, and also, um, I'm also going to have on the website where if you had an attorney, whether they were good or bad, um, we want you to be able to um, tell us your experience of, what, of your lawyer and how they help you. And we're actually going to have uh, lawyer reviews on our site. So you'll be able to log in with your username, password, go to the reviews tab, put in the uh, lawyer's name or your attorney's name, city, state, uh, county, uh, rate them from one star to five stars. And uh, in the comment box, you can leave um, a comment about their services. Um, there's too many people out there just don't know the type of attorneys that they're getting. So I want to basically put them on blast and put their fucking, uh, put their reputation out there because a lot of these attorneys have never even won a case. But they taking your money like they're going to win the case, but we all know where their loyalty lies. It lies with the bar. So they may not like it, but it's for the people. Uh, so, Ivan, right, I'm going to be out. Y'all take care. Stay safe. Get your knowledge up. Uh, I'm getting mine up every day. I never claimed I know everything, but, you know, I'm making that effort. And you need to make that effort, too, especially if you're getting jammed up uh, by these statutory criminals. So, you know, I, I'm out, y'all.